that the March for Our Lives has ended, the conversation is turning to the future, particularly ways in which we can end the epidemic of gun violence in the United States. When you look at some of the deadliest mass shootings in American history, one fact becomes abundantly clear. The shooter is almost always a man. 94% of all mass shootings are committed by men, including most of the deadliest shootings in recent American history, starting with the Las Vegas concert shooting, the deadliest mass shooting in modern history that left 58 people dead. The 2016 Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando, 49 people died. The shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut killed 27, including more than a dozen children. Last year's shooting at a church in Sutherland Springs, Texas, the deadliest American shooting in a place of worship, left 26 people dead. And of course, there was last month's shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. 17 students and adults were killed. In fact, only one of the top 10 deadliest shootings in modern U.S. history involved a woman. That was the shooting in San Bernardino, California, which was perpetrated by a husband and wife. 14 people died. So what's happening to our boys and how can we help them? Well, my colleague Stephanie Rule sat down with a group of young men to explore the pressures of masculinity and why some eventually turn to violence. If you want to be man enough, you don't cry. You can't show pain, you can't show upset. Man up, dominate, turn it all off. Emotional struggle. A fact of life boys find obvious, but it's largely gone ignored. Until recently, tragedy forced the conversation. When the Parkland shooting happened, I just felt so sad because we've been living with this time and time and time again. Michael Ian Black, a comedian and writer, penned an op-ed for the New York Times that went viral, pointing out the common thread among most mass shootings. Boys are the ones who are committing these crimes. Boys are the ones who are pulling the trigger. And I wanted to raise the question, what's going on with the boys? The statistics confirm the concerns. One in four boys are bullied. Only 30% tell an adult. Boys are four times more likely to be expelled from school than girls. The suicide rate is four times higher for males. And yes, 94% of mass shootings are committed by males. Most boys are gonna grow up and never ever commit acts of violence like this. But I feel confident in saying most boys would also rather uh, starve to death in their homes than ask their male friend for help shoveling their driveway. This rigid model of masculinity, it's killing us. We brought together a group of young men to give us their take on the emotional well-being of boys today. Who's been told to man up? Oh. What does that mean? No clue. I got mm -hmm. no idea. So no emotion. Yeah. Yeah. What's the hardest part about growing up for boys? Hiding the pain. Yeah. Not being able to express yourself. Kind of makes you feel trapped almost because it's like you have nowhere to go. I have sons who don't want to open up to me. Why would you do the, I'm fine, it's okay? It's easier. Why is it easier? You're, you're, you're hurting inside. You're succeeding as a, as a guy. You are doing the right thing. We are taught at a really young age, don't cry, have no fear. You're like, okay, so if I get through this, people will go, wow, that guy's really strong, he's tough. The violence starts, the suicide starts, the depression starts, all about the same time that we ask boys to man up. Dr. Niobe Wei is a professor of developmental psychology at NYU, focused on adolescents. Not needing other people. That is at the root of masculinity. And if you look at all the school shooters, including the one at Parkland, every single one of them has said in some way that they feel desperate for connection. So there was this one time I was with my friend. He just she looked at me, started crying. And I, I really had no idea what to do because I've never had anybody, any guy at least, express his just emotions towards me. He just said, I think I just need a hug, and we, I hugged him, and afterwards, we both looked at each other and we were like, we're never gonna say anything to anyone. When you cry, does it make you feel like a failure? No, oh, there's that, that's that sense of sitting there going, why am I crying? I shouldn't be crying about this. Because it's normal. I understand that it is normal, but it is not normal. The same thing. <laughs> it's the best way I can put it. <laughs> and they all laugh because they know exactly what I'm talking about. It is normal, but it isn't normal. It is human, but it is not man. When you see these terrible headlines about gun violence, 
or when you see numbers of suicides going up, do you guys understand it? 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell me why. For people who aren't part of the normal guy group, they're both isolated from the other guys and often isolated from the girls around them. How come these horrible school shooting incidents, it's always a guy, why is it ever a girl? I don't think it ever will be a girl because girls will express their feelings and they will get it out. Girls are able to have more acceptable outlets than guys. How can we make things easier for you? Get rid of the old stereotypes that we have in our society of a manly figure. I think that starts with kids and teach them about expressing yourself without viewing as a wrong. I guess it, it's up to me to take that first step, hope that somebody is right behind me and continue taking the second. Steps a new generation hopes could help protect their own future. Stephanie Rule, New York. Such an important conversation. For more, you can check out New York Magazine's recent series called How to Raise a Boy. It examines the complicated topics surrounding youth and masculinity. And we just